Hey filmmaker, Netflix will trash 99.5% of your masterpiece. So filmmakers everywhere, you, so you bought a cinema camera, $250,000 for tax? Whoa. But you gotta get the best image, you know, I get it. Let's see what happens to that expensive image. Let's talk data bits. So 1K frame of your sensor, 3840 pixels wide by 2160 high, that's 8 million pixels. But we measure bit rate in seconds, so that's 24 frames, so 24 times 8 million pixels is 200 million pixels per second that we have to keep track of. So we have to save each of those 200 million pixels to memory. I'm going to skip the raw type of uh, calculations. We can use 8 bits for red, 8 bits for green, 8 bits for blue, 24 bits for a full color image. So for one second, we'll have to save stream 200, 200 million by 24 bits, so 4.8 billion bits. In short, we need 4.8 billion bits to represent 24-bit color for one second of 4K video. Yes, I know it can be compressed, but compression always has a cost. We'll get to some other compression schemes later. Netflix and others stream 4K video at roughly 25 million bits a second, or 3.5 megabits, megabytes. What percentage is 25 million bits of 4.8 billion bits? 0.5%. I know, hard to believe, but believe it. <laughs> oh boy, 0.5. So let's compare to some other compression schemes. We can compress each frame individually using JPEG algorithms and would probably not notice a difference, even at 90% compression. We're now at 480 million bits. That's five, Netflix, it's like 5% of the camera's output if we use MJPEG. And then if we use H264 at 422, which gives us temporal compression, we get around 96 million bits per second. And that's about 21% of Netflix would use of that if we're using the 422264. And then there's 264420, which by the way is what we get uh, streamed to us, 420. Again, temporal compression, get about 60 million bits per second. That's 30% that Netflix uh, would stream of that. <laughs> so you know, even that, like think about just how effective this stream, streaming is. Anyway, so yeah, the AV1 codec, these corporations started using in 2008 do not have quality in mind. These companies collectively spent probably tens of millions of dollars. The less bits they stream, the more profits they make. Sorry, that's capitalism. But let's keep things in perspective. What really goes into a cinematic image, in my opinion? Expert lighting using a truck's worth of equipment. That's 40%. Photogenic people and clean sets, 30%. Expert audio capture, Foley and ADR cleanup, 20%. Good lenses and rigs, 9%. Camera body, 1%. It just really doesn't mean much. Image quality only matters when producers aren't sure people will watch. So if Taylor Swift did a movie with an iPhone 8 of her walking around her house in a skimpy bikini, playing the guitar, streaming services would bid in the hundreds of millions forget for it. Forget their list of approved cinema cameras. Hi, well, some people complain my videos are too slow, so there you go, everything very quickly in four minutes. And, uh, but here I'm gonna take my time and talk about some, some things I find interesting about it. So again, if you just look at it from a purest point of view, to get pure, uncompressed, exactly what the camera sees, even in just an eight bit, um, you're gonna get streamed 0.5% of that uh, information. Now it's compressed. They do all kinds of tricks. It's not like you're going to notice it. Um, but anyway, just, I just find it fascinating that it's, uh, yeah, you can compress it that much and it still looks fine. But as I said, it's really all the lighting. You know, like right now, like I'm talking on a cheap camcorder, but in this lighting, right? I mean, it looks great. So I think what I find, one of the interesting things I find about AV1 and I don't know if this is an H.265 or not, but uh, and I'll try to put up a graphic here. They will, um, if it sees like a, a, a square, like a patch of random color information, it will just basically create a, an algorithm 
you know, formula to draw that. So it doesn't actually, you know, it might show in one frame, but after that, it just basically says to the, to the, uh, to the rendering engine, it says, I'll just, you know, just, um, just draw this in this way using these vector formulas or whatever. So a lot of the image that you're seeing in AV1 is actually a computer simulation of what it believes that you want. And we're seeing a lot of this. This is in, um, so for instance, we all know from our phones that if you look at the image on your phone and you're into photography, as I am, you know, these images are not, are not being captured by the sensor. But they're an algorithm that will take all the images and, and paint in what it thinks that you want to look at. And it looks beautiful, don't get me wrong. So I don't mind like the AI look of uh, cell phone uh, images because frankly, the raw images themselves are pretty bad and pretty uh, noisy. So yeah, I mean, I think it's great and I'm, I'm not against it. And then recently uh, with the, so DJI released their new action camera, the action camera five. And if you look at the images, if you compare it to the four, you can see the same sort of cell phone effect where like a guy sitting in a car, normally the, the background would be blown out, but uh, you could see that it, you could actually see some of the stuff because the, the sensor is automatically doing a log profile in the sense and pulling in the, uh, the, 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 the brightness behind him and making it into a nice image. Even though it looks a little HDR to me, I think most people would prefer it. <clears throat> so we're seeing this everywhere. And so I'm going to make a bold claim right now that we're actually at peak cinema camera. That cinema cameras will become, there'll be less and less effort putting in, put into making them better and better. Um, and that more effort will be put into the actual computer generation of the image of what somebody wants to see. And I want to say this isn't like new in art. Like in, in music, right, when a person gets a jazz book, they don't get all the notes spread out. It just says, you know, A flat like this, you know, vampire, you know. So in music and many of the arts, uh, they're already uh, uh, trend, not trends, but they're already uh, ways of looking at it where somebody won't even want all the specifics. They'll just want you to tell the person what they want, and that person will make it up. So again, in, in the camera, when we're coming to the camera in a sense, when the AV codec gets this image from these super you know, expensive, elaborate cinema cameras, essentially it's taking the image and saying, yeah, that's great, but I'm gonna sort of like redraw it a little bit here or there, just the same on bandwidth. And who's gonna know the difference, right? And, and that's what it's doing, it's fascinating. And I think we're gonna see more of it. Another case that was similar was uh, the movie Civil War, and it was shot you know, with all these DJI cameras where, I forget the name of the device, but the you know, director is back doing these things and all these cameras running around, because they don't care. They, they don't care about the camera. You know, they're just multiple cameras going around, doing, and then they're gonna, you know, model it together. And uh, this trend has been going on for a while. And I think that another possible thing is like in a TV show, you, you know, if you take the Unreal Engine, they may say, you know what, we're going to, develop the, uh, the instructions for the Unreal Engine to do the backgrounds of our show, and we'll shoot everybody in the green screen, have them act out, act out and we're gonna have them, we tell the codec, listen, for the resolution of the characters, get that right, get the skin colors exactly right. But the rest of it, we're just sending you instructions and their PC or computer or cell phone, whatever, it'll render it, and they won't really care because they're not focusing on it, right? So I think that that's sort of the, the what we're going to sort of see uh, further and further out. So when I say like, uh, okay, yeah, 0.5% of the image is getting compressed, yes, but the way they're going to fix it is not by, um, I feel by like uh, filmmakers or the public saying, hey, we want better images. We don't, we don't want to see all this pixelation and you know, macro blocking in these dark scenes. No, what the, instead of like, fixing the codec or getting more streaming or stuff like that, the way I think Hollywood will deal with it is they're going to say, okay, well, we're going to put some software on your computer and we're going to tell it in some scenes, like, you know, like I was watching um, my wife, the uh, only murders in the buildings. So when they're in the basement trying to find this guy, right? It's very dark. There's tons of macro blocking. It's horrible. I think in the future, I won't be surprised if AV won't say, okay, uh, here's, here's uh, Steve Martin, right? 
and he's Steve Arden, and get him right. But the rest of it, we're just sending you an instruction to basically just uh, create the virtual reality that he was talking in. And then you get really good quality. So I think that's the future. And I think as a filmmaker, that's what you should get into. Don't get into like getting expensive cinema cameras and understanding that. Understand Unreal Engine, understand AI, understand all these technologies being used to generate images based on a simple instruction. So like in the future, if I was doing this video, I might be at home and I might say, okay, just get me here and render me a background at the golden hour, okay? Render me some trees and whatever and, and, and do that. And you know, and then I could tweak it right here, I can't, right? But th there I could. So I think that's the future. This isn't a video about like a downer, about like, oh, you getting such garbage, you know, video into your computer from, uh, or your display or whatever from this movie maker. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's true, but I mean, it's just not the way the world I think is going to go. The art is going to be in computer generated assets and then some of the real stuff composited over. Uh, oh, look at that, helicopter. Anyway, you get the boast of both worlds, right? You get this four minute, very intense about, you know, compressing codecs, and then you get this long ramble about the future of filmmaking. Thanks for watching.